Barbecue Central Show, let's go. The number one barbecue show on the low. Your host, Greg Rampy, the grilling master, spreading the info, getting to you faster, asking tough questions and having a blast. The Barbecue Central Show is here at last. The best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Come on, let's go. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less. I'm your host, John Solberg. Today, we take a journey back to March 29 of 2011. Doubleheader show, both segments, Teddy Reader. Teddy Reader's got some wonderful information on juice burgers and searing steaks. Without further ado, let's get into Greg and his conversation from March 29, 2011, with Mr. Teddy Reader. The best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less. Come on, let's go. So we could probably do easily a two, three hour show uh, right in a row about uh, everything where you've started and, and how you've gone and progressed into where we are today, but uh, perhaps another time. Uh, for that, Ted, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about tonight that was we were kind of corresponding about this segment and you brought up and it immediately caught my attention as did the other three or four things that you were uh, listing that we could talk about juiced burgers. Are we talking about steroids and Bobby Bonds type juice burgers like they were in the mid 90s with baseball players? What are we looking at here? No, it was it was uh, <laughs> yesterday I had uh, I had 20 liters worth of beef stock. And I put it out on the uh, out on my burners, and I boiled it down to one liter or one quart worth of demi glass, this heavy duty jelly of, um, of of reduced concentrated beef stock. And I cut it into a nice square chunk, and I threw them into the freezer. And I guess they would be uh, an inch by inch squares, oh. and froze them. And then I made a burger, and I had also smoked some brisket on the weekend, and so I had take this puck of uh, demi-glass, I wrapped it with shredded uh, brisket, and then I put that inside a burger and I grilled it up. And when you bite into it, because I, I ground my own meat, I cooked this burger to a nice medium rare, but the inside, the brisket was nice and hot, but that hard frozen puck of demi-glass was now liquid. And when you bit into it, you got this squirt of demi in concentrated beef stock that came into your mouth and it was pretty amazing. So I, I decided to call it the juiced burger. I mean, it sounds like a mother pucker of a burger, Ted. I got to be honest with you. Uh, so, how, okay, I, let me back up here in case anybody is uh, perhaps even interested in trying to do this on their own. First of all, how do you, do you, can you just take any beef stock? Do you have to make it from some type of secret recipe? And then how long do you cook it for to, to get it down to that uh, demi glaze as you talked about? Well, I, cooked, I bought veal bones, and I roasted the veal bones and actually smoked the veal bones. Uh, some of them I roasted, some of them I smoked. I put them in a pot with onions and celery and carrots and fresh thyme and garlic and, and cold water. Brought it up to a boil, and I let it simmer. Uh, probably for a good 48 hours on the stove. And then I strained it and then back onto the stove and let it boil and boil and boil and reduce. And, and after I strained it, I allowed it to cool so I could take the fat off of it. And then you're just left with the liquid and it turns into this gelatin um, and it, a jelly and it just boils down. You just keep reducing it and reducing it and the flavors just concentrate. And it becomes, you know, it, it, it's every chef's real secret recipe or secret weapon in the kitchen is really well-made demi. So you, and that gets it all going. You cut it into squares, you freeze it, then you wrap uh, some chopped brisket around it, and then you stick the chopped brisket with the puck of demi glace in the middle of a burger. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that is... And then where, throw it on the grill and cook it. Well, I mean, Don't where does it, it even come from? It. Where does it even come from? That stuff? I mean, where do you even think about that? Uh, well, you know, a lot of it comes from my friend Jack um, <laughs> and his brother Daniel. Right. And, <laughs> yeah, I love and, those guys. You know, I, I, I love my Jack Daniels, and, and uh, I just, I, I love to cook. It, it's my life. I, 
I'm forever thinking about what I can do next or how I can cook it or make it. And, and, uh, you know, I, it, it, I, I really can't answer where it comes from. It just comes from, I sit out here in my man cave in my garage and I'm surrounded by my barbecue. I live it and breathe it, whether it be firing up a smoker or firing up my fire pit. Um, I just want to get out there and cook. And I, I really, what drives me is I want to share it with my fans and with anybody that loves barbecue. There's no secrets in Ted Reader's world uh, of barbecue. You want to know what I'm going to tell you. I want everybody to get in their backyards and have fun and create great food. I want them to enjoy firing up that smoker and spending all day out there sipping cold beers and making the best pork shoulder or brisket or smoking a chicken or or smoking up some rack of ribs, or if it's just going to be grilling a steak, make it the best steak. I just want to inspire you to get out there and have a good time. That's really where it comes down to. And this past weekend, I was doing some demos, and I had some people come by, and they're like, man, I love your burgers. I love what you do. And that kind of comment just gives me more inspiration to go and cook. And I live this and breathe it every day and just truly enjoy the world of barbecue. So when you take that initial bite into this whole creation, dare I say masterpiece, what are your first thoughts as a critical chef and and barbecue grilling expert as the flavor explosion is hitting your mouth? Well, as it, I bite into it and the juices of that demi start to run down my chin and it gets all sticky in my goatee and I kind of get, you know, I feel good. I, I moan when I bite into it and I'm thinking, now that's a burger. And that's the way a burger should be, you know. A burger shouldn't be a dry, tasteless hockey puck. When you bite into a burger, it should be a moist, wet, juicy experience. Personally, I think that biting into a burger should be as good as sex. Right. Because, you know, if you had the sex, you could have that burger afterward. People throw the word searing around. And inherently, the terms that follow are things like this sealing in the the juices or keeping in the natural juices through the process of searing, which I think is complete horse crap. But where do you fall out on that whole argument? Does, does searing seal in the juices? And if so, why? And if not, how come people continue to say this? Well, what I, I do find that searing does help keep the juices in, but that's not the whole purpose of it. You take a steak, for instance, and, and I'm I'm pretty fussy about my steaks as well, like I am with my bacon. Uh, I dry age my own beef. I do it for about 49 days. I trim it up. I cut two inch thick. I use New York strips. I cut two inch thick New York strips and I bring them up to room temperature. I fire up my grill and I'll either take my, my charcoal and, and work with it at about 900 to 1000 degrees when it's super, super hot. Or I might even use my infrared burner to, to help steer. But all I want to do is I want to quickly cook the outside of that steak just to give that char flavor on the outside. And that's the main purpose of the sear. It's not really to keep all the juices in because the juices are going to stay in. The only way the juices are really going to come out is if you start pushing on that piece of meat. You got to leave it alone. But I want to get a quick cook on the outside and then I put it off to indirect. I close that lid and literally at 500 degrees indirect with my lid closed, those steaks take 12 minutes, two inches thick, and I have a wow. perfect medium rare to rare steak every time. I pull it out and I let it rest. I don't poke it. I don't touch it. I may take a mixture of fresh garlic, some kosher salt, black pepper, and a little bit of olive oil and baste that on top of my steak. But I like my steak to be a steak. I want to taste the meat. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's leave it alone. Quickly cook the outside. Just get that, that outer flesh, you know, sealed. And that's the end of it. And that's my philosophy. And, and, and when it comes down to it, I tell you, we were, in, we were in Vegas, my wife and I, and we were eating at uh, Mario Batali's Steakhouse. And it was a delicious steak. But halfway through the meal, it was like 70 bucks a person for this, <laughs> this, uh, this bone-in cowboy steak that serves two. So it was 140 bucks for wow. a steak. And halfway through it, my wife says to me, she looks up and she says, you know, you make a better steak than this. And, <laughs> and my wife never says anything nice to me about stuff. And, right. and it just, you know, I found a method that works for me. 
Um, I think that cooking a steak at 1,500 degrees all the way through is crazy. I don't think the meat enjoys being beaten up at that high a temperature. It needs a quick sear, put it to the side, leave it alone. And while it's resting there in those 12 minutes, I get two to three shots of Jack and a beer chaser, and I'm a happy guy. (laughs) Happy guy. That's right. Ted Reeder is joining us here on the show, breaking it all down with the juiced burger. We talked about some searing uh, and and what does it do to the meat. And then, of course, uh, we were talking about bacon steaks. Always one of my favorite guests to talk to, and you can find them at tedreader.com. Ted, I always appreciate the conversation. Thanks for coming on tonight. My pleasure, Greg. And, you know, if you ever get up to Toronto, you got to come to Casa Barbecue. You can hang out in the backyard, and we will cook up a feast. Well, the problem is, Ted, you invite me, but I might never leave. Well, I, you know, I'm married to a divorce lawyer, so I know you'll leave. <laughs> there you go. Well, Ted, uh, again, I always appreciate the time, and I'll certainly take you up on that invite. All righty. We'll talk to you later. All right. Take care. Have a great one. Keep there it he is. Safety. Ted Reeder. Wow. Yeah, baby. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's right, Ted Reader. You never know what you're going to get out of Ted Reader, but it's always going to be good. You want to hear this or any other Teddy Reader episode? Head on over to the BBQCentralShow.com. There is an archive tab at the top of the page. Click on that. You can scroll through. There's a search function on that page. Type in Reader or any other subject you may want to find a show on. It'll bring it all up for you. While you're there, click on the subscribe button so you never miss this best moments of the barbecue central show in 10 minutes or less or the barbecue central show itself until next time i'm your host john solberg thanks for listening the best moments of the barbecue central show in 10 minutes or less come on let's go